हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम फ्रेंड्स रिसेंटली वोडोफोन आइडिया केम आउट विद देयर क्वार्टरली रिजल्ट्स सो यू कैन डाउनलोड द क्वार्टरली रिजल्ट्स व्हिच आई हैव ऑलरेडी डाउनलोडेड एंड दिस रिजल्ट गिव्स मी एन ऑपर्चुनिटी टू डू अ डीप डाइव अबाउट वोडोफोन आइडियाज बिजनेस व्हाई आई एम डूइंग दिस एट दिस जंक्चर द रीजन इज दैट वोडोफोन आइडिया एज एन एंटिटी इज एक्सट्रीमली क्रूशियल फॉर प्रिजर्विंग द कॉम्पिटिटिवनेस ऑफ द टेलीकॉम मार्केट If Vodafone Idea collapses, the market competitiveness of the telecom industry is no going to nose dive, and that is going to impact the customer's interest because the customer is going to have have no leverage, and the remaining operators are also not going to be motivated enough to drive technology further and make the necessary investments. So that is why preserving Vodafone Idea is extremely crucial. so what i've done friend is that in order to make the discussion more structured and without having to uh, without me getting into a, a in a in a situation of digression and preserving my trail of thought i have created a few bullet points which i'm going to analyze one by one so in this presentation i am going to talk about vias financial results financial progress whether they are making progress or not and what in which direction uh their results are 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 heading so so you will get a very good understanding about the progress of vi as per as financial results are concerned concern the next point is this is the first point the next point is the competitiveness of vi versus their competitiveness the market leaders as well as challengers means how vi is positioned against market leaders and challengers we are going to talk about vi's debt challenges because this is very significant currently because of the moratorium this impact is not seen in their financial results which is going to be seen going forward in fy26 we are going to evaluate that and how these challenges can be mitigated mitigated and what is the mitigation strategy vi recently lost some subscriber to bsnl because of tariff hike whether this is a temporary phenomena or it is going to sustain for a long period of time we are going to investigate that and then we are going to talk about how bsnl business is going to impact vi's growth and bsnl is important because most of the bsnl's investment is subsidized and if there is a phenomena of subscriber migration to be to bsnl then vodafone ideas subscriber growth and revenue is going to be hit hard okay so without wasting any further time let's go and analyze each item one by one so let's talk about their financial results now if you look at this chart this chart captures the quarterly results of vodafone idea starting from third quarter of fy19 so if you see that what i have done is that in order to ensure that we are able to see the trend i have put everything in one single chart which is revenues opex ebitda margin ebitda in, in in absolute terms margin depreciation amortized cost ebit interest and financial cost exception item pbt as well as pat so all the financial items are being put uh, in one single chart starting from quarter Three FY nineteen till the last quarter, where the June results were announced. So what you see here, you see that the revenue in absolute terms actually has not increased; it has decreased. But the decrease was substantial till FY twenty two. Now after FY twenty two, the the decrease has been mitigated and it has increased. But since fy24 till the la, the quarter the quarter june quarter of fy um, end of june quarter there is the first quarter of fy25 the growth hasn't happened in fact there has been a slight decrease in the first quarter of fy25 which is a matter of concern then the opex which was very high initially it went down after that it has become stable because both revenue growth as well as opex has remained stable it is quite natural that ebitda in absolute term is also has become stable which is roughly to the amount of around 4100 or 200 crores per quarter so you see that it is roughly around that ebitda and therefore the ebitda margin is also around 40 to 41% now in this quarter the newspapers have reported that vodafone idea has done better as far as profits are, are concerned which is nothing but mitigated their losses they are not making any profit it everything is negative here but the question is that if they have mitigated their losses this is on account of what this is not on account of increased revenue because revenue as you see it has decreased from the last quarter also their opex have increased from the last quarter for example if you see in the last 
quarter, that is the fourth quarter of FY24, the OPEX was 6271 crores, which is now 6303 crores, which has slightly increased. So they haven't done good as per their top line is concerned. So what is driving a better, uh, you know, to, what is driving them to contain their losses? It, this is interest and finance cost, which has gone down and the depreciation amortization cost. So this is uh, the reason why the profitability of Vodafone idea, which means the losses have been curtailed compared to the earlier two quarters, right? So this is the reason. So this is not fundamentally good because if you look at a company's results, your growth and profit should be driven by your top line, not by interest and though it is important, but primarily it should be driven by top line. But here is one of the very important challenges. Actually, there are two challenges. The first thing is that how Vodafone Idea is going to increase their top line. What should be the strategy? They have already made tariff hike and those results are going to be visible only the next quarter and the quarter after. But the most important challenge is regarding interest and finance cost. How they are going to mitigate and continue to keep this uh, financing cost as low as possible. So we are going to address this first, the finance cost first, and then we are going to talk about their ability to raise, uh, increase their gross revenues. So in this regard, friends, what I've done in the morning, I wrote an article and I'm going to take you through this article and I also posted the link of this article in the description for you to follow through. So what this article is talking about is I have created a table. This table, if you see, this is the table. This table lists all the government of India's um, uh, debt the Vodafone idea holds as regards spectrum and AGR. Now, if you look at this number, if you add all the debt, it comes out to be around 1,95,000 crore, which is roughly now around 2 lakh crores because there is slight escalation because this number is still 31st December 2023. Now, why this table is important? This table is important because it allows us to calculate the obligation of payment for Vodafone idea starting from FY26. Why this FY26 number is important and vital? Because you know that Vodafone idea currently is in the period of moratorium. It means they don't have to pay for these, uh, these debts that they are holding, neither the principal nor the uh, interest. But this debt is going to be due starting from September 25, 2025. So this is the date when the moratorium ends. So by looking at these numbers, which are already there in the uh, quarterly, in the annual report of Vodafone Idea, what I've done is that because I knew the principles, the outstanding amounts, as well as the starting date and the yearly installment numbers all there in the quarterly results. So I have been able to calculate that how much Vodafone Idea has to pay in the next financial year and the year after. So this number comes out to be roughly around 37,000 crore. So let's round it off to 40,000 crore because there are certain elements of debt which is missing from this. And this number is since in 31st December 2023, this will be slightly escalated. So let's make it 40,000 crore. So what happens is that Vodafone Idea now has an obligation to pay 40,000 crores of, of interest and principal payment starting next year. That is FY26 and year after that also the same amount will be applicable and it will perpetuate for few years more. I think it will keep on perpetuating because the reason is that they will actually have to accumulate more spectrum. There will be some spectrum option, let's say after six years. So if you look at these uh, yearly installment, you'll find that the yearly installment numbers, the minimum number is six and the maximum is, is 18 and the weighted average January is 8.36. So for eight years, they will have to perpetually spell out 40,000 crores. Now let's go back to the, the, uh, the, uh, the account statement of Vodafone Idea. So you see the interest and financing cost as per Vodafone Idea is concerned on a quarterly basis is around 6,000 crores. 6,500 crores are roughly that. So if you multiply 6,500 crores, let's say multiplied by four, it comes out to be around 26,000 crores. So 26,000 crores outflow, Vodafone Idea is already making on an annual basis today as far as interest and finance are concerned. 
Now, if you add on this 26,000 crores, 40,000 crores, you can imagine the kind of situation Vodafone idea would be. So this number, if I add here, let me just make the addition and I'll, put, uh, I'll take out my pen. So here you see, I just simply add how much? 40,000 crores. So from starting from uh, FY26, there will be an outflow of 66,000 crores. And what is the revenue Vodafone idea has? Vodafone idea has a revenue of roughly around one ten thousand seven seven uh, ten thousand roughly around ten thousand crores yeah a little more than that so around forty thousand maybe let's say forty two thousand crores of revenue gross revenue on an yearly basis now imagine that if you have a revenue of of uh, of uh, forty two thousand crores and you have a have an interest and in obligation of sixty six thousand crores on an on a yearly basis starting from fi twenty six how you are going to make the payment so there is a debt mitigation strategy and this is exactly what I have listed down in this article. So what I have saying is that how Vodafone idea can mitigate this debt and not pay that 10, 40,000 crore and continue to pay whatever interest and finance costs that they're paying as of now. If that finance cost persists and if they are able to bail themselves out of this requirement to pay, uh, pay 40,000 crores, how they are going to do it. And this has been spelled out here in this note in this article and you can read this article. So what I'm saying is how DOT will be able to take more equity and what kind of prices in which DOT will be going to take the equity and if they take equity in various prices, how much you know percentage of holding of the company that they are going to end up acquiring. So if you see here, if uh, today the DOTs or the government of India's holding of Vodafone idea is 24.27% because they already have around 6.13 billion shares which were acquired at rupees of 10. We already know that because this is what the government of India bailed Vodafone out of the interest cost during the period of the moratorium which was 4 years which is going to end on 25th uh, September 2026. Now let's say in case 1, as soon as that 40,000 crores of, uh, of uh, you know, outflow which, is, which becomes due then what happens is that if the share acquired at 15 rupees, then their overall um, you know, holding of the company, which will include this 24.27, will become 45.95% and the calculation has been shown here, which you can see. Similarly, if they acquire shares at the face value of 20 rupees, then they will end up holding 41.17% of the company and if they acquire the shares at 25 rupees, they will end up 38.96%. Now, DOT cannot perpetually acquire shares of Vodafone idea. So therefore, DOT has to offload their equity in advance. So like if you see, if DOT acquired their holdings at rupees 10, and now the shares are actually trading at rupees 15, it is important for DOT to have a strategy to offload that stake because next year, when in FY27, when 40,000 crores of dues are going to be um, applicable, they may be able to acquire and convert that to equity and that will preserve the DOT's overall uh, uh, you know, share as far as percentage on a percentage basis on Vodafone's ideas holding to the current level only. It should not be increased to disproportionate level. So if you look at the conclusion of this article, if you read this article, what I'm saying is that the DOT has to have a strategy of not only acquiring but also offloading. So this is the debt mitigation strategy as far as Vodafone idea is concerned. Now what was the other point which we were discussing? So we have discussed debt, we will discuss the competitiveness challenges etc. later. Subscriber loss. Let's talk about the subscriber loss to BSNL. Now as regards subscriber loss is concerned, I would like to make the following point. This is important for everybody to understand. What is that? BSNL has got spectrum in three important bands. The 900 megahertz is going to remain for GSM for a long period of time. What are those bands? One is the 700 megahertz band, 10 megahertz, Pan India. Another is the 2100 megahertz band. And the actually there are four bands, sorry. Another is 2500 megahertz band. And the fourth is 3500 megahertz band. 2600 gigahertz band is a not a very useful spectrum. So what BSNL is currently doing, as per my understanding, I may be wrong, people may correct me, they are deploying their 4G only in 2100 megahertz band to as of date. They haven't deployed anything in 700 megahertz meaningful. So the, all their 4G deployment is, is in the 2100 megahertz band. 
Now, if you continue to deploy your 4G in 2100 megahertz band, and Vodafone Idea has their 4G deployment in 900 megahertz band, 1800 megahertz band, then the coverage of Vodafone Idea as regards 4G is concerned will be better than the obvious enough because they have not deployed anything in 700. I don't know why what they're doing, how they are going to go about in 700. I have no no clue. Okay. So 2100 4G of BSNL is not going to sustain them for a long period of time because of coverage issues and Vodafone idea will have a better coverage going forward as far as 4G is concerned. So whoever has gone to BSNL will come back to Vodafone idea because BSNL's 4G strategy is completely screwed up. They are not doing a very good job because 2100 is not a good spectrum as far as 4G is concerned. What they should have done otherwise, otherwise uh, which would have helped via BSNL significantly is not 2100, 800 megahertz, which I have been saying for a long period of time. People might have already uh, heard it when I have so told it many, many times. So if you look at the uh, these uh, vacant spectrum as far as um, 800 megahertz concern, you will see that these pink spots are already available. Here 5 megahertz is available in every place where you want to deploy your 4G and that should have given BSNL much more depth and spread as well as scale if they had done 4G there and that would have significantly impacted Vodafone idea subscriber loss because BSNL would have been much more empowered. But there is a risk. The risk is that if BSNL does not deploy 4G in 700 and they end up deploying 5G in 700 megahertz band then there will be a huge risk for Vodafone idea as well as for the other telecom operators because 5G or BSNL is going to be much more empowered because of 700 megahertz band. 700 megahertz 5G is going to be empowered. Now people may say that, oh, BSNL is doing 2100 megahertz band. As far as 4G is concerned, 700 they will do 5G. But this is only one band. What is the second band on which BSNL is going to deploy their 5G? It can be 3500 and it can be, it should have been actually 2100. Because if you are going to have an empowering 5G network, you should have one low frequency band, one mid frequency band and one high frequency band. Because if you have a one low frequency band and one very high frequency band, they, the, the network is not going to be very, very robust. Because either you are going to be in high capacity or you are going to be in the low capacity, your coverage is not going to be ubiquitous. You are not going to take advantage of the various spectrum bands. So the problem with BSNL is lack of mid frequency band as far as 5G is concerned. But the 700 megahertz is going to be very, very useful for BSNL. And if BSNL deploys 700 megahertz 5G, Vodafone idea as well as Bharti is going to have a tough time. And this is also very important because 5G devices, when you start, is not going to be with carrier aggregation. So the devices which are going to work in networks of BS, of Vodafone Idea or in Bharti, they do not have 700 low frequency band. Even in Reliance, even if they have carrier aggregation, let's say Reliance network if we compare, 700 megahertz with 1800 carrier aggregation, but the devices will not support carrier aggregation. So it will be good enough for BSNL to run those same services and the people will not notice the difference even if they are in BSNL network compared to them being in Reliance network because the device is not going to support carrier aggregation across multiple bands. So BSNL is good enough supporting 700 and if there is a capacity issue, the people will be able to go into the 3500 megahertz band which will be overlaid on top of 700. So. Let's summarize this. As far as 4G is concerned, there is absolutely no risk. Vodafone idea. All the subscribers which have gone to BSNL will come back because the coverage of BSNL network is going to be extremely poor because of 2100 megahertz deployment. 700 is currently not being deployed as its first strategy. BSNL may deploy 5G in 700 megahertz band going forward and if they do that on a pan-India basis, then not Vodafone idea Bharti as well as Reliance is going to have a huge problem because what will happen is the low-end devices of 5G which do not support carrier aggregation will experience better performance or similar performance in both BSNL as well as Reliance network. Maybe in BSNL network it will have to better performance because BSNL network will be reasonably empty. Reliance is going to be more congested.
and Bharti and Vodafone is going to be a completely different story because they do not have low frequency 5G band. So now you understand as far as the competitiveness of BSNL is concerned as regard their competitors, market leaders and market challengers. This is what I wanted to explain. Right? Now, as also we spoke about the subscriber loss of BSNL, temporary phenomena, with this I have answered the question. And I have also spoken about BSNL business, how it can impact VI's growth. Now, one thing I haven't spoken about, which is also very important. Let's assume that BSNL is completely screwed up. They do not deploy a good, do a good, do, a good deployment of 4G, which they are anyway doing in 2100 megahertz band. And 700, they do 5G, but they are pretty slow. Then Vodafone idea is to compare with, uh, com compete with, with whom as far as their 4G deployment is concerned, they have to compete with Bharti. Now there is a problem here. Let me explain to you what the problem is. Now if you look at this chart, this chart is actually a, a aggregation of or a let like us say snapshot of towers. So I, what I will do, I will just blow this chart so that people can, if people are able to see this properly. I will make a little bit, I will zoom out this. So if you look at this chart, you will see that the number of towers, let's look at number of 4G towers and whether it is 4G and, 2, and, and 3G or 2G does not matter. We are looking at towers, not base station. Now, if you see 30th June 2024, Bharti had around 3.24 lakh towers. Vodafone idea had around 1.83 lakh towers, but their unique tower count is only 1.7 lakh crore. Uh, lakhs, right? And BSNL has only 70k towers. Now, in the call, Akshay Mundra said that the Vodafone idea strategy as far as 4G tower growth is concerned is going to limit itself to only 210k towers, means 2.1 lakh towers or maybe 2.1 2.15 lakh towers this is the maximum that they are going to go. Now, imagine that Vodafone idea has a uh, Pan is going to have a pan India deployment of only 2.15 lakh towers versus Bharti's 3.24 lakh towers. So, Bharti is going to be how much? Vodafone idea is going to be 2.15 uh, divided by 3.24, which is 66% of Bharti's coverage. This is a matter of concern. So, Vodafone idea has risk not only from BSNL, but from Bharti. And Vodafone idea, Bharti and Reliance Geo has risk from BSNL's 5G deployment if BSNL deploys a pan-India network even with 70k base station in the 700 megahertz band 5G. All the three operators are going to face a problem because as 5G devices get percolated down in the ecosystem, non-carrier aggregation devices which does not aggregate carriers across multiple band will face a similar experience, even a better experience in BSNL network compared to Vodafone Idea and Bharti. And Reliance also because Reliance 700 megahertz band is going to be congested. So I think friends, you probably have understood the whole equation. This equation is not just a simple linear equation to solve. It's a complicated, you know, non-linear equation where multiple people are involved. So, government is pushing BSNL on one hand, wanting to make it successful, and it should. BSNL is a government entity. There are so many employees which are working in BSNL. BSNL should be made successful. And there are resources which are bl being blocked by BSNL, and those resources should be used properly. Vodafone idea is also being backed by government because the government doesn't want Vodafone idea to fail. So, Vodafone idea should also be supported by the government. But if the government does the right thing as far as BSNL is concerned by deploying 700 megahertz 5G in BSNL, both Vodafone Idea and Bharti as well as Reliance is going to have a problem. But as regards their 700 megahertz strategy, if they are going to use 2100 megahertz band, the 2100 megahertz band is not going to have reach and therefore the consumers are going to have a huge problem as far as coverage is concerned. Capacity, they may have 10 megahertz but that capacity is not going to give them any benefit because if there are no coverage inside the house as far as 4G is concerned, you will not be able to utilize any of their advantage services or the packages that BSNL is going to offer. Okay? But if BSNL deploys 5G in 700, definitely going forward, there will be a problem. Now, if BSNL is screwed up and if Vodafone idea is fine as far as BSNL is concerned as far as 4G and 5G story and it has to compete with Bharti, 
then the number of tower counts the vodafone idea is targeting going forward is just 66% as per as bharti is concerned so now you understand the dynamics as per as what kind of situation vodafone idea is going to face from the point of view of growing their revenue as well as from the point of view of managing their finance cost where government has to in get involved and they have to have a strategy of not only offloading but how to manage their future financing obligation by investing in more equity at an appropriate price which they can offload as they progress in time in future because that 40000 crores of finance cost is going to perpetuate for years to come it can continue to go to up to 8 years every year there will be an additional 40000 crores of outflow on accounts of finance interest payment and principal payment to government of india which vodafone idea has to pay but there is a silver lining here if you see that this 40 out of this 40000 roughly around 70 to 80000 is agr dues so if agr dues is curtailed and the supreme court hears on the agr dues and if you are able to reduce this then this number can become low but it is not going to become substantially low it may be within 30000 crores not 40000 crores it may go to 30000 crores but still it will not be possible for vodafone idea to pay that debt without the support of the government so friends i am going to stop here i don't want to continue this uh, any further i think yeah, i have made my point and you have understood what i was talking about and um, if you if you think that there are any questions that you want me to uh further touch upon or further elaborate let me know in the comment section i will be very happy to take you take those forward and many thanks for staying till the end and listening patiently thank you very much friends and i'll come back with a new video next time